Hello everyone, welcome to a Small Turbo channel. So today I'm going to present to you this scientific investigation for my virtual class. So first, let me ask you this question. How do scientists acquire knowledge? Alright, so for your answers, uh, before you answer that question, let us first play this. Alright, so we go to bookwidgets.com slash play. Then we're going to enter the code and let's just view the widget. And all we have to do then. So students, you need to arrange the puzzles here. So you have to answer this jigsaw puzzle before we proceed. And out of this puzzle, you'll uncover something and that is the way how scientists acquire knowledge. The answer already, if you have the answer already regarding the jigsaw puzzle. Alright, so you uncover the steps of the scientific method. Alright, so scientists acquire knowledge by following the steps of the scientific method. So, our topic today is all about scientific investigation. The learning competency that uh, we followed all throughout this discussion is to learn to describe the components of a scientific investigation. And we have here the objectives. At the end of this module, you define scientific method. Second, list the steps of a scientific method. And third, show example problems solved using the steps of the scientific method. So, what is a scientific method? So, scientific method is a process for experimentation that is used to explore observations and answer questions. So, this is, um, this comprises of steps that are always used by the scientist in order to acquire knowledge. So what are the steps of the scientific method? So usually there are six steps. So first is asking a question. Second step is doing background research. Third step, constructing a hypothesis. Fourth step, testing your hypothesis by doing an experiment. Fifth step, analyzing your data and drawing a conclusion. And sixth step, communicating results. So other books mention seven steps because they are, uh, they separated this analyzing data and drawing a conclusion. But here I just um, compress the two. So let's go back to the first step or the step one of the scientific, uh, yes, the steps of the scientific method. So step one is asking a question. So it starts with how, what, when, who, which, why, or when. Example, how do maggots come into being? Are you familiar of maggots? Can you still recall its... Um, can you still picture out what are maggots? So here is it. So other places eat these maggots. No? So can you see the, the, the image here? It has a question mark in him. So 
This is the first step of the scientific method, asking a question. So, how do maggots come into being? Step 2 of the scientific method is doing background research. So, it describes why you are doing the experiment. Example, so people believe at that time that organisms suddenly appeared from non-living matter. So, example, maggots come from meat. So, this idea was called spontaneous generation. So, by doing the background research, that comes out. So, as you can see in the picture, maggots come from meat. So, that's, it has something to do with the belief uh, during that time that about spontaneous generation wherein living matter come from non-living matter. Now, let's proceed to the third step, constructing a hypothesis. So, this step is an attempt to answer a question with an explanation that can be tested. So, for example... Francesco Reddy proposed and thought that flies laid eggs on the meat, but the eggs were just too small for people to see. He thought that the eggs then developed into maggots. So that's the hypothesis of Francesco Reddy. So as you can see, so the meat now has a fly in it on it. So that's the hypothesis of Francesco Reddy. The fourth step, testing your hypothesis by doing an experiment. So this step is a careful test to find out something or to prove or disprove an idea. So the variables involved are independent variable. So when we say independent variable, it's the factor that is changed by the researcher. Then we have dependent variable. So it's the factor that we measure and control variables. So when we say control variables, they are the variables that are held constant. So example, Reddy set up an experiment in which he controlled all the variables constants except one. So Reddy left one jar of meat open so that flies could enter. So that's the control group. And he covered the mouth of the other jar of meat with ghosts. That's the experimental group. So the independent or the manipulated variable was the ghost. The dependent variable was what resulted from leaving the control group open, which was the appearance of maggots. So one jar of meat was open and the other jar of meat was covered with ghosts. So this is the picture. Okay, so as you can see, so it's the meat the meats are inside so the variables in redis experiment we have the controlled variables so they are the variables that are held constant so in an experiment to become fair or for a test to be a fair test you need to control all the variables except one so only one manipulated variable so the controlled variables are jars type of meat location temperature time then we have the manipulated variables the goes only so that's the only variable that is not held constant so you have the fair test fair test is very important in science then we have the fifth step analyzing your data and drawing a conclusion so uh, in this step, we summarize and explain what happened in the experiment. So, for example, Red recorded his data. He discovered that maggots appeared on the meat in the control jar, which is the jar left open, and no maggots appeared in the jar covered with ghosts. So, in Red's experiment, the results supported his hypothesis. Can you still recall the hypothesis of Francesco Reddy? He hypothesized a while ago that the uh, maggots come from the flies that laid eggs on the meat. 
so he therefore concluded that the maggots were indeed produced by flies. So Reddy's results could be viewed not only as an explanation about maggots and flies but also disprove the hypothesis of spontaneous generation. Can you still recall what spontaneous generation is? That uh, means uh, living matter comes from non-living matter. So this is the picture of the steps for um, analyzing data and um, drawing conclusions. Then the sixth step of the scientific method, communicating results. So it is a very important step of the scientific investigation because it allows others to either disprove or support your hypothesis. So example, so after Francesco Reddy did his experiment, he shared the outcome to John Nedham and Louis Pasture. So John Nedham tested Reddy's experiment. He disagreed with Reddy and thought that spontaneous generation could occur under the right conditions. Nedham developed his own experiment. Louis Pasteur tested also Reddy's finding. Pasteur showed that all living things come from other living things. This new theory was called biogenesis. So, um, out of the findings of um, Francesco Reddy, another theory uh, comes out. So, this is the picture of uh, communicating the results to other scientists. Alright, so... That was all about scientific investigation, which is the first topic of science grade 7. So I hope you learned something and uh, please uh, feel free to um, download, use this if you want to. Alright, so thank you and see you on my next uh, video. Bye-bye!